Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk about Vivaldi's chamber concertos, and particularly this old, wonderful Phillips recording, which you may or may not be able to find. Um, it, when you put them all together, they occupy about three or four CDs worth of stuff. There's a whole bunch of these little suckers. And I want to just tell you what they are, because, you know, one of the things about Vivaldi is that he wrote so many concertos, I mean, so many concertos, that you, you don't always remember where all of them are or what they all are. Some of his most famous ones are chamber concertos, but let's talk about what a chamber concerto is and why I'm doing this, actually. The reason I'm doing this is because when I made the video about the Philadelphia chamber soloists, the Philadelphia wind quintet, those people, uh, they did one of these chamber concertos, and I couldn't remember it, really. Um, it was a lovely, lovely work, and they left the continuo part out, which you can do just perfectly well, actually. Um, it works fine in that particular case. Um, it was the G minor concerto, uh, and it, it's for like flute, oboe, and bassoon. Really charming, and I thought to myself, wow, I haven't heard that in ages. And of course, I have like five recordings of it or ten recordings of it, but you know, you don't listen to it. But when you hear some of these things out of their normal, their normal grouping, all of a sudden they, you focus on them and you realize just how delicious they are. And so I went back and I said, you know, I've got some other recordings sitting around, not even in the overflow room of Vivaldi's chamber concertos. You know, um, Il Giardino Armonico, I think was the group they did on for Teldec, a four disc set of all of them. And this is only two discs, but it features some amazing soloists. It's Mikola Petri, recorder, Heinz Holliger, oboe. Felix Ayo, violin, and Pasquale Pellegrino, violin. You know, these are Imuzici people. Um, and Christian, Christian Jacote, harpsichord. Yes, she's wonderful. Klaus Tunemann, bassoon. Thomas Domenga, cello. And Jonathan Rubin, Theorbo. It's quite an assortment of people because, I mean, they're all fabulous soloists, fabulous. And, you know, each one of these pieces is for different forces. So let's talk about what therefore if i can well getting it out of the box was i thought maybe i'd loosened it up a little i was listening to these things prior to making the video no such luck so you know how to do it you you take that out you push this down and you pull that out ha i did it it was a trick back in the days when cd cd things like this had cardboard sleeves which are the same as this but you know it made them look fancier and protected them somewhat, although this one has a nice healthy crack down the back here. And it also had those disgusting yellow foam spongy things, which I removed in the nick of time as they were starting to turn into, you know, goop that would destroy the CDs. Because these are old CDs. Look at this. See this? You know, it doesn't even have like the plastic inner inner spindle thing here. You know, these are these are originals original CDs. Wow. So let's see what these chamber concertos are. And then let's talk about a little bit about what chamber concertos formally are. You have, um, let's see, in D major for recorder, oboe, violin, bassoon, and continuo. Then we have G minor. This was the one that the Philadelphia Wind people did for recorder, oboe, bassoon, and continuo. They replaced the recorder with a flute, which was perfectly fine. And then we've got, let's see, C major for recorder, oboe, two violins, and continuo. And then there's something called Sonata RV 86 in A minor for recorder, bassoon, and continuo. It's called a Sonata because it's not in the typical three movement, fast, slow, fast concerto form. It's a church Sonata that is slow, fast, slow, fast form. And that's what makes it a Sonata, in case you care. Then disc two has G major for recorder, oboe, violin, bassoon, and continuo. A minor for recorder, two violins, and continuo. Then there's the famous La Pastorella, which is a flute concerto. Basically, it's for recorder, oboe, violin, bassoon, and continuo. Then there's G minor for recorder, oboe, violin, bassoon, and continuo. And D major for recorder, violin, and continuo. And that's it. That's the clump of them that are here. So what makes a chamber concerto a chamber concerto, you might ask yourself. Well, the Baroque concerto, as it has come down to us, consists of 
uh, a form called a ritornello form in most of the movements. Um, and the ritornello form is really very simple. It's the same thing as an aria form in a Baroque opera. The orchestra announces the main theme. Then after announcing the main theme, the soloist has an episode and does a solo thing. Then a bit of the ritornello, there's the opening orchestral theme, returns not usually all of it, usually a piece of it. Then there's another solo episode. Then there's a little bit more of the ritornello. Then there's another solo episode. And then at the very end, the complete ritornello or main theme returns to round the whole thing off. It's as simple as can be. The form is just A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. I mean, think the episodes can be different, but the solo is the same. So that is your normal concerto. But in a chamber concerto, you don't have the full orchestra playing the opening theme and accompanying the solo episodes. All you have is this clump of soloists plus the continuo on the bottom, if you use that, if you have that. And so in order to create the concerto format, the idea of, of big group with the tune, smaller group with the solo episode, bits of the tune. Vivaldi usually has everybody playing the theme in unison together, and then he breaks up the ensemble into different soloistic, you know, featured soloists for the episodes. And then they all come together again. So instead of having a separate string orchestra section handling the, what they call tutti, that is together, the all, when everybody plays together, episodes, you have everybody doing everything. But what makes the difference is how many parts there are, how many voices there are going on at the same time. When they're all in unison, it's a orchestral solo. I mean, orchestral tutti, an orchestral, you know, orchestral thing, main theme. And when you have solo episodes, there's solo episodes. And that's all there is to it. Bach does exactly the same thing in his Italian concerto, which is for solo keyboard. That's all it is. But the difference is that the, the concerto orchestral episode parts are usually unison themes. And then it breaks up for these solo episodes and features a, a one distinctive voice with something distinctively subordinate. And that's how you realize the concerto concept, even when you don't have a full orchestra, but just a tiny little group of soloists and maybe a little bit of continuo accompaniment, harpsichord or guitar, theorbo, as, as in this thing here, you know, doing the accompaniments. Um, they're delicious pieces. They're some of Vivaldi's most famous concertos. Their chamber, these little chamber concertos, and I enjoyed them very much. And so here's the one on Phillips, if you can find it. You know, there were there were complete sets of them, and I was looking on Amazon, and now they all seem to be out of print. They're probably agglomerated in giant Vivaldi boxes and things like that. I mean, I'm sure I have them sitting over there. Brilliant Classics had one, and of course, you know, Teldec or Warner doesn't have a giant Vivaldi box with these things in them, and I don't see the little Giardino Armonico's. Um, chamber concerto complete set available anymore, but there's there's bunches of them sitting around, and you can just sample them at your leisure. They're delicious, trust me. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.